I want to talk about degenerative disc disease. I have several videos on this, although I want to mention a few other important things that many of my subscribers or actually comments that I see written uh, on a regular basis, they have some questions and hopefully I can answer it for all of you. Degenerative disc disease is a condition where the discs degenerate. When you look at the spine between each vertebrae, you have discs in the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar region. The discs are designed to act as shock absorbers. They keep the vertebrae, uh, vertebrae above and below apart and spaced out enough to where the nerves have enough room to come out to do its job. When the discs become degenerative, the vertebrae get closer together. So as these vertebrae become closer together, the nerves, as you can see here, the nerves become more inflamed, more irritated. There's less space in what we call the intervertebral foramen. The nerves become inflamed, they become painful. As discs start to degenerate, the outside fibers, you can see the disc is made up of the outside annular fibers and the nucleus pulposus, which is a gel-like substance in the middle. When that gel uh, starts to come out against those fibers, we call that a bulging or a herniated disc. As the discs degenerate, chemicals are released, and these chemicals are like toxic chemicals that cause pain, distress along those disc fibers. Uh, there is a lot of complexity that goes on physiologically, but the bottom line is that the disc is always trying to repair and heal as the body's trying to allow it to heal by sending uh, diffusion and nutrients into the disc to keep it strong. But what happens is in disc degeneration, the majority of people who experience this generally is uh, from a traumatic event, initially when they were younger, uh, people who are uh, big athletes that put a lot of pounding, maybe football, uh, running, rugby, uh, people who sit up a lot that may have poor posture, uh, people who may become overweight. Just the spine, when it's not stable, it starts to slowly degenerate. The problem with degeneration is there's no symptoms as it's happening. In the later phases of degeneration, we st they then start to get inflammation, irritation, decreased motion, stiffness, and we start exhibiting pain. When we uh, take x-rays or CAT scans or MRIs or any other diagnostic test that can visualize the disc, and we can see that there is a significant diminishment of thickness of that disc, that is the primary diagnosis, degenerative disc. Now, in the past, they called it degenerative disc disease, but it's really not a disease. It's a progressing disease condition, but it's not harmful where it's going to hurt you or harm your health, but it's something that can cause motion restriction, pain, discomfort, and affect you on a day-to-day -day basis. So you're asking, well, I have disc degeneration. How do I heal it? Uh, how do I repair it? You can't. Now, people will, will argue with me and they'll send me uh, all kinds of uh, papers and, and, and reports and saying that, well, if you take the chondroitin and glucosamine or you take these other particular types of nutrients and herbs or stem cell research shows that we can go ahead and we can fix the disc, uh, show me uh, a tire that's worn out on a car and find a way to get that tire thick again like, like it was before it worn out before it wore out. So same thing in the discs. Understand that if it can rejuvenate, which obviously we know as we get older, we have less vascularity. We don't have the circula circulatory system circulation going to the disc anymore. It's kind of diffusion, osmosis, where this is how the nutrients get into it. Uh, that's why as we get older, the discs seem to dry up. As they dry up, they st it's kind of like the inside of a donut. The inside of the donut has the, the, the cream, the outside of the donut is like the, the, the shell or the fibers, but as everything dries up, it starts to crack and become brittle. The same thing in the discs. So as the discs start to degenerate, you then start going through deformation and changes in the disc. But the bottom line is, as the discs get thinner together, imagine there's two bones with a thick disc, and as it gets thinner together, now we have less space. So now we have a problem with possible spondylosis which is degeneration of the joints because now we have joints that are rubbing and hitting and now we have less space where the nerves coming out so we have a whole complexity of problems. So I just want to let you know what do we do? The best thing for disc degeneration is taking off weight, staying flexible, having good proportional balance in your body, exercise is, is, a, is a big key. 
Uh, stretching is extremely important to keep things flexible, to keep things moving. Remember, in every joint of the body, we have synovial fluid. Synovial fluid is like kind of the fluid that keeps things moving nice and smooth. The more movement we put into a joint, generally, the less uh, is going to degenerate. Degeneration generally occurs more when something's just not working. The body just seems ways of trying to get it to work, but if it doesn't keep moving, the body can just go through more degeneration, degeneration, degeneration. Uh, good nutrition, one of my favorite, omega-3s. Omega-3 is a great anti-inflammatory. Great anti-inflammatories like turmeric, quercetin, ginger. Uh, there are so many different ones out there, but uh, I love turmeric. It's one of my favorites. Great anti-inflammatory, great antioxidant. Uh, your fruits and vegetables, your juices, your antioxidants, your, your great greens that you, that you may juice, uh, very, very good for you. Whole grains, fish, excellent. Lean meats, um, lean fish. Obviously, most fish is lean, but uh, let me take that back. I like the fatty fishes, like the mackerel, the salmon, uh, king tuna, that kind of stuff. Uh, all of that stuff is good because that's kind of works with the omega-3s and helps reduce inflammation. I do recommend people to limit uh, a lot of your omega-6s because too much omega-6s causes inflammatory conditions in the body, not only in the, in the musculoskeletal, but in the visceral and the circulatory system everywhere. Uh, not good. Too many omega-6s is, is no good. You can do research on that as well. Lots of fluid, lots of water, a good mental attitude, good sleep pa patterns with good uh, postural uh, balance, particularly when you sleep. Uh, those are all things that you can do to help get by. Now, there are other treatments like uh, acupuncture, acupressure, chiropractic, physical therapy, physiotherapy. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do. So, I tell you this with love because I don't want you to do anything that's invasive, that's harmful. Uh, doctors will put you on like serious non-steroidal anti-inflammatories that could do damage to your liver, do damage to your kidney, uh, affect you in many negative ways that's no good. I hope this answers your question. I want you to know one thing, that the majority of people in this world have degenerative disc disease and don't know it. So that should tell you something. So, this is something uh, that is you, something you have to deal with, something you have to prepare, something you have to kind of change your way of life that if you're obese, you're sedentary, you're not active, you got to get up and start making that change today because you got one body, one castle, and that is where you live in and you need to take the best care of it. Leave your questions below. I ask you to share this video with others. Subscribe if you haven't so you can continue to receive the best of the self-help videos here on the internet. And most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.